let me deal with this problem before they can do one of two things enter into an alliance and get others to come or attempt to escape when he assembles his armed force or is it the process of assembling his armed force to come and attack and when he believes now that this is the time when we have them all together we'll finish them off this time it is at that time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives orders to Banu Israel, to Musa al-Islam, during the night time, during the night time, flee. And when you flee, you're heading towards the Red Sea because your destination is to get out of Egypt and to go back to the Holy Land. Hmm? So Banu Israel is, is fleeing during the night time. And when Pharaoh hears that they are fleeing, then very hastily, whatever he could accumulate of his armed force, he pursues them. When the daylight comes, he has already made considerable progress <laughs> towards catching up with them. And Banu Israel could look back and see the forces of Pharaoh coming. And in front is the sea. Now tell me, you truly have to have faith in Allah at that moment to still remain strong, confident. All the others would have given up hope. We are now between the devil and the deep blue sea. There is no hope left, nothing. We have followed this man and we made a mistake in following him. See? The only ones who will still remain with him are the young. Which is why in Surah Al-Kahfi, at the beginning of the Surah, إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَىٰ It was the young ones. They were the ones who gave up everything. Gave up their houses, gave up their jobs, gave up their cars, gave up everything. When the godless world had made it impossible for them to live as Muslims. Everything was now stopped. Every door was closed. When every door was closed, they didn't say, well, there's nothing else we can do, so we might as well throw in the towel. We're going to have to compromise. That's the only way we could remain here and continue to eat roti. No. The young one said no. We rather give up, give up our homes, give up our jobs, give up the land in which we live, give up society, give it up, separate from them, disconnect from them, and go and flee in a cave in a mountain. Rather than to give up our Islam, only the young would do that. Mm -hmm. It is for us to take a lesson from what the Quran is saying here. If like me, you reach 60 and your beard is now white, that no, my heart can also be like the heart of a young man. Mm -hmm. Fearless, fearless when striving and struggling to keep Islam. When the last moment came, and we have truly been tested. Who are those who truly believe in this prophet? At the very last moment, when it appeared that there was no hope left, it is only then that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa alayhi salam, take your rod and strike the water. In the same way that Allah intervened and saved Banu Israel through this miracle and destroyed that powerful, arrogant, oppressive, godless world that was persecuting the Muslims. Through a divine miracle, so too will history end. Ashura is the story of how the story will end. 
that history is going to, sh to re uh, witness a repeat of that epic encounter between truth and falsehood. When Fir'aun was drowning underneath the water, Banu Israel have crossed and they are now in Sinai. And Pharaoh and his army are now crossing and the waters came down. Then Pharaoh, while he was drowning, same Surah Yunus tells us, while he was drowning, now the veils are removed from the eyes. And now he could see what otherwise he could not see. And he recognizes the truth of the message of Musa alayhi salam. So he declares, now I believe in the God that Banu Israel worship. And I am a Muslim. Okay? Now I am a Muslim. In fact, this was the fulfillment of a dua. Listen to the dua that Musa Islam made. And it is fulfilled now. Musa al-Islam prayed, O oh Allah, you have indeed given to Pharaoh and to his government and his people, given them splendor, given them wealth in this life of the dunya. And you have done that, O oh Allah, in order to misguide them, mislead them. Your wealth is the source of your going to Jahannam. O oh Allah, I pray to you, Musa Islam is praying. I pray to you, O oh Allah, to cause the wealth that they have to rotten them, to deface the features of their wealth, so that that wealth would cause them to become rotten and send hardness into their hearts, O oh Allah, so that they will not believe until that moment comes when they see the fire. Only then they will believe. They will not believe until that moment comes when the veils are removed and now they can see what they could not see before. Only now would they believe. And Allah then responded and He says, Your dua of Moses and Har Musa and Harun, your dua is accepted. And so Fir'aun, at the last moment, when now he can see what otherwise could not be seen, now he accepts Islam. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded in the next ayah, and he says, Al-an, now Fir'aun, وَقَدْ عَصَيْتَ قَبْلُ And before this, you were in open rebellion. وَكُنْتَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And you were committing fasad on the earth, corrupting the earth, oppressing the earth. فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ This day, we have decided to preserve your physical body. لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً That your physical body, when it is rediscovered, would be a sign for a people to come after you. But most people, they don't have time to bother about my signs. Hmm? So when the body of Pharaoh is discovered, this is the sign of all signs that history will now witness a repetition of that epic encounter between Musa and Fir'aun. And it will end in the same way that those who are persecuting the Muslims hmm, will at the very last moment when they believe that success is now assured for them and they will finish off the Muslims and when amongst the Muslims they all lose hope except the young. <laughs> At that last moment, Allah will intervene. Over there he intervened with the rod and the sea. And over here he intervened 
with the son of Mary who now comes down which was my lectures on Jerusalem and the Quran and all the other lectures the body of Firan was discovered towards the end of the last century uh, a little bit more than a hundred years ago and so for the last hundred years you cannot understand history and you cannot understand the future which lies ahead unless you go to this Quran and not only study the history of Banu Israel, the prophets of Banu Israel, but in particular study the history of Musa alayhi salam. And when you study the history of Musa alayhi salam, study the event of Ashura. Because Ashura has in it the key to the understanding of history today and the understanding of the end of history. I believe this is perhaps the first time you've heard a talk on Ashura like this. Every year on the 10th of Muharram you fast for Ashura. <laughs> yes. And every year on the 10th of Muharram you hear some sec lecture or something on the subject of Ashura. But that the Quran should be the source and the base for understanding Ashura, this is where we have been deficient. Yes? Sorry, but the, the books of Sirah tell us that the Jews used to perform the, the Hajj to the Kaaba until the idols appeared in the Kaaba. And only when the idols appeared in the Kaaba, only then did they stop performing the Hajj. And so the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam came to Arabia not only with Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, but there was interaction between Banu Ismail and Banu Israel until that time when the idols appeared in the Kaaba. And so we would have to assume that the idols had not appeared in the Kaaba at the time of Ashura. Hmm? Any other questions? Yes. The hadith is, a good important point you've made, that when the Prophet ﷺ arrived in Medina, remember the Arabs were already fasting eh, on Ashura, but we do not know how they fasted. No, we do not know how they fasted. When they arrived in Medina, they found the Jews also fasting on this day. So they must have been surprised. We fasting, they fasting. But they were fasting according to a law of fasting which was quite different to them. And they didn't like it at all. <laughs> what is it? From sunset to sunset, no food, no drink, and you had to stay away from your wives for the whole night. That was impossible for an Arab. Huh? Impossible for an Arab. But when the Prophet asked them, why are you fasting on this day? And they said, we are fasting on this day because Musa alayhi salam fasted on this day. 
And Musa alayhi salam fasted on this day because this is the commemoration of that day when we crossed the sea. He said, we have a better right to Musa than you, indicating that although the Arabs were fasting on Ashura, they did not know why they were fasting. That was lost. That was lost. Okay? And then he ordered the Muslims to fast with the Jews, not in accordance with the Arab law of fasting, but now in accordance with the Jewish law of fasting. And so, for the next 17 months in Medina, the Muslims fasted with the Jews on the days when they fasted, including Ashura, and in accordance with the Jewish law of fasting, which is still there in the Torah. And after 17 months, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the revelation in Shaban, the second Shaban, Kutiba alaykum usiyam. When that revelation came down, then Allah Ta'ala promulgated a new law of fasting. And in promulgating that new law of fasting, there is the evidence that we were fasting in accordance with the Jewish law of fasting. I think I quoted it last night or night before. This is in Surah Al-Baqarah, somewhere around verse number 159, 57. Alim <laughs> Allah knows what you used to be doing secretly in violation of the fast, going to your wives in the night time when you're supposed to stay away from them. Fataba alaykum. Allah has turned towards you mercifully. Wa'afa ankum. And Allah has forgiven you. Fal'an. And so now, Bashiruhunna Embrace them, meaning during the nights of fasting. And when you embrace them, Wabtagu ma kataballahu lakum. And now seek when you enter into your wives, seek for what Allah has written for you. So it is Allah who does the writing. You can't sit down with your wife and say, you know, I think we should only have two children. American Sunnah. <laughs> and better to have one child this year and then the next child after three or four years, okay? All right? What happened? Why are you looking at me like for? So when you decide how many children you want and when you decide when you want the children, you are attempting to take over from Allah and do the right thing yourself and that is shirk. That is shirk. To attempt to take over from Allah and do the right thing yourself. Because Allah says, وَبْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Now in order for you to fulfill this order of Allah, to enter into your wives and always seek for what Allah has written for you, you have to come and live in a Muslim village. Because if Allah sends you 12 children, you can't survive in the flat. You can't survive in the flat. Okay? So in order to live in the flat, you're going to have to attempt to take over from Allah and limit the number of children you have. You see? And in the process of doing that, commit shirk. Any other questions before we go for Titarikas? Okay, I didn't answer that. There is a curious hadith in Sahih Muslim. That's the only way I can explain it. It is a very curious hadith. <laughs> it says that the believers came to the Prophet والسلام, and said, O Messenger of Allah, we are fasting on Ashura, 10th of Muharram, and they, the Jews and the Christians, are also fasting on Ashura, the 10th of Muharram. We should be different from them. And so the 
The hadith says that the Prophet ﷺ responded and he said, If I were to live until the next Ashura, then we will fast on the ninth and the tenth. Then we will fast on the ninth and the tenth. But he died before the next Ashura. So, this event took place at the end of the ninth year of the Hijra, or early in the tenth year of the Hijra. And so the companions waited for nine years before they realized that we were fasting on the same day with the Jews. It took them nine years before they realized that we were fasting on the same day with the Jews. And after nine years, now they come. And when they come to him, he says, if I live until next year, we can do something about it. For me, the minimum I can say about this hadith is it's very curious. <laughs> yes, any other questions? Alright, so inshallah tomorrow night uh, we will deal with uh, a dars. So come prepared to answer questions. And if you sit at the front here, you might get more than the others. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا يَا مَوْلَانَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعاليك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير وصلى الله تعالى على خير كلكه محمد وعلى آله وعلى أصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الرحمين تمارنا إن شاء الله the prohibition of riba in the Quran and Sunnah